Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, greet you all with the greeting of Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, may the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. And this is another experiment about understanding taking questions, live questions, and inshallah if anybody else is that would like to join later on in the same methodology that you can call and we make live uh, Q&A on the internet for other people to benefit from it. So we have one sister with us here to, uh, today, inshallah, I think she's calling from US, and she have a question about, uh, I think she got my booklet concerning 200 hadith for a Muslim woman, and she is interesting to ask a few questions. Assalamu alaikum sister, are you still there? Yes, brother. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, he said you have a couple of questions concerning some hadith in the booklet. Yes, brother. Um, first question I have is uh, Hadith 116, wearing perfume in public. Uh, it says basically that every eye commits adultery, and when the woman uses pressure, she passes by, and this is like she is meaning an adulteress. So why is it that? Women cannot wear perfume in public, but men can wear cologne. Okay. Uh, it says the hadith is number what? 116, brother. 116, one, okay, towards the end. 116. One. Page 65. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hadith... عن أبي موسى عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كل عين زانية والمرأة إذا استعترت فمرت بالمجلس فهي كذا وكذا يعني زانية نيرتت أبو موسى مي الله بيبليز وزيمز the prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying every eye commits adultery and when a woman uses perfume and she passes by a gathering then she is like this and that, meaning an adulteress. Uh, in Islam, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he forbid things, he said, don't do this, don't kill, don't eat the property of the orphan. But what came about one of the major sins, which is the adultery and fornication, he said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا zina." Don't come near adultery. Allah did not say, don't come near stealing, okay? Because adultery, it have many ways to lead to the adultery. Adultery is stages and ranks, okay? So, and the anything that it may eventually lead to uh, lead to a relationship between a man and a woman okay is prohibited in islam like being in a place in privacy together uh, traveling together they are not mahram uh, wearing uh, clothes which can be its color catching the eyes or showing the shape of a woman or putting perfume so all these things it can lead eventually to adultery okay so the prophet sallallahu had showed us that adultery is is not only having intercourse that there is degrees and the worst of it is the sleeping and having the intimate relationship. But he said, Al-Aynu tazni wa zinaha nadar. Wa al-Uthunu tazni, tazni wa zinaha, wa zinaha al-sam. That means the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, I commit adultery. And the adultery of the eye is looking to the opposite sex. That means from a man to a woman or a woman from man. He said the ear commit adultery, and the adultery of the ear is listening to things that is not supposed to be Islamically right. And he said, and he said that a woman commit 
the hand commit adultery and the adultery of the hand is the touching okay and he said and the private parts will approve this or reject it so it's not because they use the word adultery that they have a illegal intercourse that means they had came with a portion of adultery so the perfume is one of the things which attract a man to a woman or a woman to a man okay especially when a woman bought it so the woman has attraction by herself being a female and Allah put her in the top list of when he said and he said that the it been beautified for mankind okay the luxury of this dunya and he said the first thing he said from the women so women come in the top of the list of beautiful things of this dunya therefore anything that a woman do which she can cause the attention of a man is haram in islam allah said uh, uh, let them not to strike the the floor the ground with their with their uh, with their shoes so the people will know about the hidden adornment so a woman have to be always concerned about being attraction to the man by any means this is forbidden in islam by the clothes tight clothes by perfume by being in prophecy by putting makeup by uh, softening her talk this also is all this is recording is the quran it's recording is the quran allah says do not soft your talk because a man who has a, uh, a evil evil feeling in his heart will be looking up to have something with you so that mean if a woman want to talk with a man she talk what you may call it a, a business talk how much is this sir excuse me uh, can i see this one how much is this but they say uh, good morning how are you sir today uh, would you like to see this? Would you like to try it? No, Allah saying even the the voice of a woman. She so anything attraction is not permissible in Al Islam. Anything to be attraction from a woman to a woman is not accepted. I don't make the deen. So this is the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when he says that a woman will be like a fornicator, does not mean that she had fornicated. But that means she had made something, a portion of uh, fornication. So this is what it is talking about. So uh, we have to understand that, uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, the hand commit adultery, the feet ad commit adultery. The, you understand? She, all these things, you understand, a portion of adultery. And you, as a result of this, you see, people spend a lot of money, especially women. They bought, they spend a lot of money in perfume because this is attraction. And we do not want to understand, promote this attraction between men and women as much as possible so we can have a pure society, not a, a society that boyfriends and girlfriends and after this adultery and fornication and after this children, they have not father no mother islam want a pure society this is what it is as a result of this he want to close all these gates that eventually will lead to adultery i hope this is clear to you so brother i ask you a question yes ma'am so why why men can wear cologne and why men can wear cologne to imagine okay uh, this what is, is yes yes a woman is not attracted by perfume from men like a, a man has a different perfume. And a woman it does, is not so attractive by a man because perfume, it will attra be attractive by him being a man. Okay? But yes. if a woman 
Her attraction is by different ways, even by her walking. You see? Her walking, if she don't walk. The Prophet says the women to walk on the side of the road, not to walk in the middle of the road. We have to, you don't know how serious it is, attraction between a man and a woman. Allah is the creator, is the one who designs things like this. Allah knows that a woman is not so moved by a, a man perfume as much as that a man, you understand, moved by a woman perfume. And he basically doing this, going to the mask. He's not doing this to catch the eye of the women. But when a woman put in this, watch his put in it to get the attention of a man. Symbol like this. But nevertheless, we are not here going to make a common sense why or not why. Allah said in Quran, do not be eager to have what Allah had preferred some of you over than the others. So if Allah gives a man something and he did not give the woman the same thing, we could not say why. Otherwise I say, okay, why in Islam is lawful to marry more than one woman, but woman could not have more than one man. Allah is the creator. He knows what is right for a woman, and he prescribed it for women. And what is right for a man, and prescribed it is a man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, قُلْ, قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ Are you going to teach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah is the one who teaching us. Allah is the one who guiding us. Allah is giving us a proper direction. So basically, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ uh, إِنَّمَا إنما كان قول المؤمنين إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم أن يقولوا سمعنا وأطعنا. In this the statement of the believing men and women, when Allah decides something, that they say we hear and obey. Not to say but why and not why. Why when a man, you understand, uh, his father died, he taken such amount, but his sister taken half of his amount. We don't question Allah. We here to do what Allah is saying. Some of it we know the wisdom of it, and some of it we don't know it why. But we hear and obey. The whole Islam is about to hear and obey. Logic, you can use your logic to understand in the dunya. How you're going to design a car, how you're going to make it with four wheels or three wheels. You're going to make a bike with three Try a tricycle or you make it with two wheel or one wheel in the deen the deen we follow we did not invent or add or delete we are those who submit to allah in everything the only thing that is our job is to make sure that this in quran or this in hadith or that this is not a opinion i'm not giving you opinion I'm giving you what Allah said, what the Prophet said. So now, if we come to the realization of the logic of it, Alhamdulillah. If we not, we say we hear and obey. Umar ibn al-Khattab came to the black stone in the Kaaba and say, by Allah, I know you are a hajar, la tadurru wa la tanfa'. I swear by Allah, I know that you are a stone, could not harm me, could not benefit you. If I didn't see the Prophet وسلم, kissing you, I'm not going to kiss you. So he kissed the black stone. Why? He said, because the Prophet did. What's the logic behind this? I don't know. The Prophet did it, I'm doing it. They said. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us to this uh, stage of total submission to what Allah and always what Allah legislated for us is for our own protection for our own good, to strengthen our deen and to keep us away from going astray. I hope I explain it a little bit that this is the best I can say, inshallah. Yes, brother. You still have, you, brother. You still have another question? Yes, brother. I have question, um, page 69. 69. Okay. What to say? Excuse me? Hadith 125, page 69. Okay. It says, woman traveling without a mahram 
can you go into depth about this? Is this saying that a woman cannot travel by herself? Or yes, ma'am. Can you? It's, yes, it's clear cut. One plus one equal two. Protection for you from everything, from other people attacking you, from your lower self, from your lower desires, from everything is for your own protection. Unless there is an emergency. If there is an emergency, like what women of the Sahaba, Hijra, when they migrated from Mecca and Medina, they left. Some of them were able to live with their husband, with their family, and some of them was not able. So we are not going to tell the woman, okay, lose your life because you're waiting in your mahram to take you. If your brother is not there, if your father is your son, if your husband, one of those people who could not marry you under any condition called mahram is not available and something emergency, and we have to know what is emergency, life or death, or a necessity that I have to run or I'm going to lose my life, or now you can go. But it is for own protection. Even you can see that a woman is not obligated to go to make hajj if she did not have a mahram. And I'm giving you what Allah is saying, what the Prophet is saying. I'm not going by a different opinions. And some people say Rifka Amina and all this stuff. You understand? If you want me to dilute the deen, I'm not going to dilute it for you. I give it to you exactly like what Allah revealed, what the Prophet said, what is the Sahaba understood. Okay? And I'm aware about what other, some madhahib and some scholars and some this and that. If you want this, you can shop from other place. Me, I put it straightforward as is, as the Prophet said. He said a woman is not supposed to travel without a mahram. Okay? Neither she's supposed to be in privacy with a man without a mahram. Okay? Said a oh, Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to read al-hajj. Okay? And I'm here being recorded to go with the army for jihad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, leave and go with your wife. That he was going for jihad, protecting the Islamic territory. And the Prophet told him to go and accompany his wife. He did not say, oh, there is other Sahaba going, so she can travel with them. He said, you go, take your name from this list, and go with your wife. And Allah knows best. You still have any questions? No, brother. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us today. And... Uh, my brothers and sisters on the internet, if any one of you at any time, inshallah, have question and answer session, we can do it. Or what you need to give me a call and we can make the time and we can have it here alive for other people can benefit from it, inshallah. Uh, thank you for joining us. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka and Allah knows best.